iron in the soul. What's up, my boy? This is Iron in the Soul. Back with another video. Please subscribe to my channel. Like this video. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think about my content. Also, I want you all to all follow me over on Instagram at the King Jabez. I'll be greatly appreciative of that if you do this. Let's do some work. Let's talk about a very important message to me, and that is what I perceive to be happening in the hip hop world concerning young black men artists. I believe I gave this video the title something along the lines of we are being replaced. Let me explain. And so I think it's very appropriate to begin this video, as you can probably guess from the thumbnail, which gives you a little insight into where I'm going with this. I think it's best to begin this with a few pages of reading from the book Decoded, written by Jay-Z. And so Jay-Z, for those who don't know, is a very well-known hip-hop artist, one of the best of all time, billionaire. And of course, he understands the hip-hop game very clearly. And he has very clearly articulated this in his book, Decoded. And so I want to take this time now to read a few pages from this book. And it kind of lays a pretty solid foundation for today's talk. When the politicians can't censure you, and the industry can't marginalize you, call the cops. The statistics of the, on the incarceration of black men, particularly of men of my generation, are probably the most objective indications that young black men are seen in this country as a problem that can be made to literally disappear. No one in the entire world, not in Russia or China or Iran, is locked up like black men are locked up in this country. I had to deal with the cops when I was hustling, and that made sense. I had to deal with the cops before that, because even before I started running the streets, I was on a radar just because of who I was. But when I was done with the streets and done with one major brush with the law enforcement, after I left the streets, I wasn't done with 5 -0. One night, I was at a baseline with my man Tone from Trackmasters, working on a song that would become Izzo on the Blueprint album. I left the studio to run by Club Exit in Midtown because I had promised Ja Rule that I'd come by and join him for our big hit, Can I Get an A? I went to the club, performed the song, and 10 minutes later, I left. I hopped in my Suburban with Tai Tai, and my bodyguard and the drivers pulled off. By the way, if you're rapping, you need a bodyguard. Not your homie, you need a bodyguard. We were one block away from the club when an unmarked police van cut us off, like a movie. Since there's a limo portion in the SUV, it took me a few minutes to see what was happening. But it sounded like a raid. Sirens flashing, cops yelling. When I lifted up the, the um, seatbelt, or the um, window rather, I saw half a dozen squad cars surrounding me. My bodyguard was already out the car, and the detective was showcasing his gun up in the air like he had found something. But my bodyguard claimed the gun and showed them the license. I was in the back seat laughing because they were overdoing it. But the next thing I knew, someone would open the door and put their hands on me trying to drag me out the car and made me turn around. I tried to talk to them. You know, this isn't necessary. He has a license. He claimed a weapon. What's the problem? The cop looked back at me with that shut up nigga screw face. But I could tell he was confused. This wasn't going as planned. He asked his partner what he should do. Right in front of me, his partner made a call and explained the situation to whoever was on the other end. I got Jay-Z. <laughs> he said to the phone with a sense of accomplishment. Then he took his man to arrest me. I was dumbstruck as they loaded me into the back of a cruiser like a prize catch. When they got me to the precinct for questioning, I saw a giant pegboard the sort you've seen in a police television show. In movies, were organized charts of rappers like you have for a major crime organization like the Mafia. But for rappers, once they had me, they made me do the prep walk, the police escort a scroll in the public, which means dragging me in front of all the photographers outside the precinct. The charges were dropped, of course. It clearly wasn't my weapon. 
but they made sure to humiliate me first. They love doing it to um, young black men. Criminalized, that's what that is, called dehumanization. And with other cases pending, they would help paint this picture of me as a menace to society. <laughs> this is Jay-Z when he was probably 28, 29, he's 50 now. If I were just a fan or a casual observer of hip hop, and you told me the NYPD had created a squad or division to deal with rappers, I'll laugh in your face. But it's clear now that the hip hop police existed. There have been some media investigations, even a public admission by one prominent detective, the so-called hip hop cop, were created on rappers and their associates. Cops stalked out our shows and nightclubs and fellow rappers in broad daylight. The hip hop cops stayed outside the clubs I was in. Every time I walked into a club, he joked with me, you got a gun. I would mess with him right back and say, do you? For seven years, the cop was there at every club and at every show. So, you know, when I say we're being replaced, this is nothing new. If this was happening in the 90s with Jay-Z, what do you think is happening right now in 2022? Do you think it's a coincidence that the popping all y'all off, they're following, they're following your social media, they are watching you, and to add injury to Enso, you have our own, they look like us, you know, secret agents who have historically joined the side of the oppressors for their own personal gain. This was even happening in the days of Malcolm X. This is nothing new. We've always had our um, mm, house Negroes to make it wild tonight. I could, I could be more graphic, but I'll, I'll call them their house Negroes who sell us out, who would do anything for money. And this is what was even happening with the character they had. They were going to make this virtual rapper, which was a joke that they stopped. But the fact that they had a black man was willing to do this, this is our problem. We are so quick and easy to sell our own people out for a little bit of money. That's all some of us even think about is money. That's it. No sense of community, no sense of nothing besides a dollar bill. And so, you know, I look at Nipsey Hussle, his duff down in Memphis with Young Dolph. You know what happened with, um, probably mispronouncing this, this man's name the wrong way. I don't know much about his music. I read a story online. I think his name was Jada Youngin. Correct me if I'm wrong. And I, I watched the uh, videos and, and I read a lot. Of course, I read the, read the articles. And after this happened, the police came to the house and took the money right out of the house from his mother. Well, as if he was criminal or something. This money he got from rapping, which is a legal job. And so what's happening is, if you guys got a half a brain, what is happening now, they are moving us out the way and taking our money. They don't want you rapping anymore. Or at least rapping about that. They want white boys to rap. They want women to rap. That's why you're seeing more women winning wars now. That's why you're seeing more of Cardi B, Megan Thee Stallion. Um, they gave me an alert on my phone probably 20 times that if I play Nicki Minaj's song, I would get more views on my reels. And so that's a clear agenda. This is what they're pushing. If you got any type of consciousness about yourself. They are pushing female artists like Nicki Minaj, Cardi, um, Glorilla down in the South, which in my opinion, she already was. I, she actually has some skills. I, I, I put that there. And so does Nicki too. And there's nothing against them. But the, and it's not that they're not talented. The problem is that they, they are being used now to push the men to the side. And what's going to happen is you're going to see more female rappers. You're going to see more white rappers. And you're going to see more rappers from overseas in the UK and different countries. Because they are they don't want to hear you talk anymore. You feel we're the ones who really got hip hop going in the 80s and the 90s, but 2000s. It's a point now where they want to push you to the side and utilize hip hop for another agenda. Because hip hop is a very powerful tool. And it has been so powerful for years. And you would think with it just being music, it would be taken so seriously. But rappers are followed and watched in a way that not even pastors are following and watched. People are not following and watching pastors. But they are following and watching rappers and, and taking them serious. And they are being watched by all types of people. And this is something that I touched on in a previous video when I talked about the, the burden of being a young king. And I think this page in this book says it well to kind of summarize what I'm trying to articulate right now. He says, but I still have to ask myself why, right? And you probably ask, okay, where are you going with this? Why is this a problem? Rappers as a class are not engaged in any criminal activity. They're musicians. 
Some rappers and friends of rappers commit crimes, of course. Some bus drivers commit crimes. Some accountants commit crimes. But they aren't task forces devoted to bus drivers or accountants. Bus drivers don't have to work under the presupposition of suspicion of law enforcement. The difference is obvious, of course. Rappers are young black men. Telling stories that police, among others, don't want to hear. Rappers tend to come from a place where police are accustomed to treating everybody like a suspect. The general style of rappers is offensive to a lot of people. But being offensive is not a crime. At least one of, not one of them in the books. The fact that law enforcement treats rap like organized crime tells you a lot about how deeply rap offends some people. They love for rap itself to be a crime, but until they can get the law passed, they'll come after us however they can. And that's what's happening. You guys get harassed, whatever you do. Let's look at Polo G. Look at what's happening with Boosie. Boosie just in the car mind his business, getting pulled over and searched. They did the same thing with the other rapper recently, um, Designer, who hasn't even been popular as of late. And so you're constantly seeing these guys getting harassed, pulled over, searched, in hopes that you will do anything wrong. They want you to have a gun. They want you to have some weed or something on you that can give them justification to take money from you and to take you out of your position. And what's happened to so many of you guys, man, you're feeling that pressure and what's happening now, you're crashing out. What I mean by crashing out, you're going to fight some people with clubs, you're trying to protect yourself, instead of letting your security protect you, and you are making it easier. And so if you watch this video, if you are a rapper, watch yourself. Be careful out here. You gotta watch your own people, you gotta watch these people, you gotta watch everybody. You are in a position where most people do not want you to win. They don't like you, they don't like the fact that you're making all this money, they don't like the fact that you have all this influence, they feel like that's the respect and money that they should have. Not some, excuse my language, nigga from the ghetto. I'm gonna call it spade a spade. And so because of that, this is something that um, is very clear for what is happening in the news over the last couple of years with so many prominent rappers, um, Draco the Ruler, um, Slim 400 over there in, in, in LA, all the rappers in Chicago, Duck, Vaughn. I mean, we can go on and on and on. You know, so I think there's a very clear message here and I think it's something you should take heed to and see the bigger picture. This is your brother Iron So. Please feel free to follow me on Instagram at the King Jabez. Peace.